Right. So, uh, let us just uh, recall we were looking at uh, point wise and uh, uniform convergence of sequences of functions. So, uh, let me just uh, recall that we said that f n is a sequence of functions defined on and, and we say f n converges to f point wise. if f n of x of course, f is also a function from x to r converges to f of x for every x belonging to the domain. And that means, uh, should not forget what that means, means for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a stage n naught, which may depend upon in general it will depend upon epsilon and the point x such that mod of f n x minus f of x is less than epsilon for every n bigger than or equal to that natural number n naught which may depend upon n and x. So, that stage uh, may depend on uh, epsilon of course, and also on x. So, then we defined what is called uh, f n converges to f uniformly, if same thing, uh, if for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a stage n naught, which now, will not depend on the point, but it will depend only upon uh, epsilon. There is a stage, so there is a natural number n naught such that uh, f n x minus f of x is less than epsilon for every uh, n bigger than n naught and for every so, probably we should mention that for every x this happens. Okay. So, we gave a lot of examples of uh, sequences which converge point wise, which converge uniformly and uh, we had started looking at uh, properties of uh, uniform convergence. We said that uniform uh, point wise convergence need not preserve various properties namely if each f n is continuous f may not be continuous, each f n is differentiable then f may not be differentiable and if each f n is integrable f may not be integrable. So, uh, to analyze these uh, properties for uniform convergence of uh, functions, let us uh, 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 recall if f is a function defined on x to r and f is bounded we define what is called the infinity norm that is supremum x belonging to x of mod f x so for and we uh, observed that this is a norm and gives a metric or so I think we called it B x r on the set of bounded functions with domain x and taking values in r. So, what is that metric? That metric is d infinity f g is equal to norm of f minus g.
Right. So, uh, the relation of uniform convergence with the, this norm is, uh, let us put that as a theorem. We proved it last time that if uh, f n, if f n x to r are bounded and f x to r is also bounded, then f n converges to f uniformly, f n only if norm of f n minus f goes to 0. Right. So, we had uh, proved this uh, theorem. Right. Let me also uh, point out that uh, here, uh, okay. so let us uh, observe a few things, some observations. One, if f n converges to f uniformly, and each f n is bounded, then f is also bounded. So, if a sequence of functions converges uniformly to a some function f and each f n is bounded, then the function f also is bounded. Right, and hence uh, you can apply the earlier criteria because there we assumed uh, f is also bounded. So one way, if f is uniformly convergent, each all f n's are bounded, then f is also bounded, and hence you can write and hence the norm of f n minus f converges to zero. That is a consequence of the earlier theorem. So, let us uh, prove this. So, f n converges to f uniformly. So, that means what does that mean? That means for every epsilon bigger than 0, there is a stage n naught which depends only on epsilon such that norm of uh, sorry uh, absolute value of f n x minus f of x. So, is that for every x belonging to x is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. Right? That is the definition of uniform convergence. So, let us specialize it. So, in particular, it is not necessary, but anyway, let us take epsilon equal to 1, then for every x belonging to x, we have f n x minus f of x will be less than 1 for every n bigger than that stage n not 1. Right? That means, f n is close to f by distance 1 okay? and f n's are bounded anyway. So, I can just apply triangle inequality. Hence, for n greater than n naught uh, epsilon fix. So, fix one any one of the numbers mod of f x, I want to show it is bounded. Right? It is bounded by some scalar for every x then for every x belonging to x, I know f of x is close to f n x. Right? And f n's are bounded anyway. So, I can use the triangle inequality. Right? Then for every x belonging to x, this is true. 
this is less than or equal to 1 plus supremum over x belonging to x of f n x that exists. Okay. So, you can call this number as m if you like. So, it implies mod f x is less than or equal to 1 plus m for every x. So, hence f is bounded. So, if a bounded sequence of uh, real valued functions converges uniformly, then the limit also is a bounded function. Okay. Right. So, that is one. Let us look at uh, second property that uh, we looked at last time. So, let us do it again anyway. That is, if f n converges to f uniformly, f continuous, uh, each f n is continuous at x is equal to c, then f is also then f is also continuous. At x is equal to c. So, continuity is also preserved under uniform convergence. So, let us prove that. All right. So, to prove this, uh, what we have to do? So, we want to make for we want to analyze the distance between f of x and f of c. Right? We want to say that uh, this distance can be made small whenever x is close to c for continuity. And what we know is f n is converging uniformly to f. So, close to f there is a f n right, at every point and f n is also continuous. So, both these facts. So, let us note this I can add. Okay. So, let me write less than or equal to f of x minus f n of x for any n. Okay, plus now f n x minus f n at c that will be small giving because of continuity of f n right. So, plus f n of c and the last is f of c. Why I am doing this? I want the left hand side to be small right but close to f there is a f n because f n is converging uniformly. So, I can estimate change f to f n and f n's are given to be continuous. So, I can use continuity for the second term of f n and finally, once again close to f n there is a f right f n is close. So, all these three terms can be made small right. So, how do I write it? So, note for every n for every x this is true. So, um, by uniform continuity oh sorry by uniform convergence by uniform convergence so this is how you think and now how you write for uniform convergence given epsilon bigger than 0 choose the stage and not such that mod fn x minus f of x is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught and for every x. So, that is by uniform convergence. So, now let us fix some n bigger than n naught bigger than this n naught fix by continuity of f at by continuity of f at the point uh, x is equal to c given epsilon as before that is already fixed. There is a delta such that mod of x minus c less than delta implies f of x minus f of c or uh, f n right. So, f n f n of c is less than epsilon. So, there is continuity of f n 
we are given f n is continuous. So, we have fixed an n bigger than n naught already epsilon is fixed. So, find a delta such that this happens then for every x with x minus c less than delta f of x minus f of c will be less than or equal to. So, go back our starting point let us call that a star when we said that f is close to f n, f n is continuous. So, that triangle inequality the first inequality right. So, that is what motivated us. So, in the star use these things is less than actually strictly less than 3 epsilon right. And if you wanted a nice thing then you could have uh, gone back and modified everything this by epsilon by 3, this by epsilon by 3 and this by epsilon 3 and that could have been epsilon right because epsilon is arbitrary. So, you can always make it as small as you want. So, that will prove. So, that proves uh, basically uh, keep in mind uh, what we want to show we want to make this thing small and we are given that f n's are converging to f uniformly and each f n is continuous. So, bring in f n's right. So, that is uh, continuity is preserved under uniform convergence. So, let us look at uh, next something which is uh, also preserved. So, third, fourth I do not know what is it property number 3 ok. Let us look at integrability let f belong to R a b f n uh, belong to R a b n greater than equal to 1 or Riemann integrable functions on the interval a b and f n converges to f uniformly. Then f is also Riemann integrable. So, then f belongs to R a b and integral f n d mu d x converges to integral f d x a to b. Uh, by the way, uh, I think uh, let me just uh, make a point here that this theorem when we said uniform limit of continuous functions is continuous another way of writing that. So, uh, let me put a note f n converges to f uniformly f n continuous implies see we will look at limit f n of x n going to infinity that is f of x right and as x goes to c that is continuity. So, limit x going to c is same as right you can write it as you can take the limit inside. So, it is limit x going to uh, ok n going to infinity let me write n going to n going to infinity limit x going to c of f n of x. So, limit f n will be f of c and f is continuous right. So, this conclusion of this you can write it as like this it is like interchanging two orders of taking limiting operations limit x going to c limit n going to infinity is same as limit n going to infinity and limit x going to c interchange of limits operations are possible whenever the convergence is uniform. So, that is another way of writing uh, this theorem so, which uh, is useful way of observing right ok. There are two limit operations. Right. So, you can interchange whenever there is uniform convergence that is what it says. So, uh, that is something something coming here also. So, I can write this as so it says a to b limit n going to infinity f n d x right. Uh, what is the right hand side f is the limit right and the right hand side f is the limit. So, here 
this f is the limit. So, I can write it as a limit that is same as this converges. So, that is limit n going to infinity integral a to b f n x d x. Again, there is an interchange of limit and integral here now, right. Integral of the limit is limit of the integrals. Okay. So again, so it essentially says under uniform convergence, integration is a continuous operation kind of. Uh, integration is continuous operation. Whenever there is an interchange, something is implies continuity of something. Okay. So is here it's saying that the limit of the integrals is integral of the limit. So, the two operations are interchanged, right. So, let us prove this. So, proof okay. So, we are given f n converges to f uniformly. So, this is given and each f n belong to R A B. We want to show that f belongs to R A B, then only you can write it is integral, right. And integral f n d mu converges to integral f d mu. So, that is what is to be shown. Now, if you want to show that f is Riemann integrable, then you have to first show that it is a bounded function, right. f should be a bounded function. But that follows from the fact that just now we have sh shown. Okay, so note. So let us note. Each f n is Riemann integrable. So that implies each f n is bounded. Right? We have shown that every Riemann integrable function is also bounded. Implies that f is bounded because f n converges to f uniformly, right. So, all are bounded functions, okay. The only thing that we do not know now is whether f is Riemann integrable or not. f is a bounded function, okay. So, let us try to show, we show First, f is Riemann integrable. We have gotten it is bounded. It's okay. Boundedness helps us to look at upper and lower sums for function. Right? That way of uh, defining integration by upper and lower sums is possible only when f is given to be bounded. In the Riemann definition, f is not assumed to be bounded. But anyway, we have gotten now boundedness. Right? Uh, to for this, what do we do show? For this, we want to show f is Riemann integrable. That means, for this, given epsilon bigger than 0, to find a partition P such that when is uh, a function uh, integrable? when given any epsilon upper and lower can be brought close to each other right the such that upper sum minus the lower sum is less than epsilon so this is what we want to show right so given epsilon if we can find a partition p such that upper minus the lower is difference is small then we are done and keep in mind how is the upper sum defined? Upper sum is over a partition is by looking at the maximum value of the function in the any sub interval multiplied by the length of the interval summed it up, right. And what is given to us? Given to us is f is each f n is Riemann integrable and f n's are converging to f uniformly. So, close to f there is a f n right and f n is Riemann integrable. So, the idea would be the upper sums of f, we should try to approximate it by upper sums of f n, right. That is the route we should follow. 
So, let us do that. So, by uniform convergence, since f n converges to f uniformly given epsilon greater than 0, there is a stage n naught such that all are bounded. So, let us write mod f n minus f infinity is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. Right, because all f n's f are bounded, so I can now write uh, the supremum less than for every x and so supremum. Okay, right. So that is same as saying, hence, for every x, for every n bigger than n naught, let us write what is hidden here is that f n x minus f of x is less than epsilon. Right. That is same as saying the supremum and hence this also is less than that. Okay. Sometimes expanding things help. What we want to do is we want to relate f with f n, the maximum value of f with f n, the minimum value of f with f n. So, this gives me this is same as saying if I look at f x, it is less than expand this inequality absolute value. So, this is f n x minus epsilon is less than f n x plus epsilon. Right? The same as saying as this. The distance of f n from f is either this side epsilon or that side epsilon. Right? That is the same as saying this. And now, this will give us the required thing. Right? So, let us choose the partition. So, given choose so, we have used uniform convergence, now we use the integrability, choose a partition p. So, let us call it as a equal to x 0 less than x n equal to b of a b such that so let, uh, we are not fixed. So, let us uh, n bigger than n naught, so let us take n naught itself such that u p f n naught minus l p f n naught is less than epsilon. Right? What I have used? I have used the fact that f n naught is Riemann integrable, because is Riemann integrable. Right? So, there must be a given epsilon, there must be a partition, so that things are close. Now, let us, uh, so this is, uh, okay. now that equation, uh, let us so keep that in mind. So, this was the equation when f n is close to, so star. So, let us use star n equal to n naught. So, what we have f n naught x minus epsilon is less than f of x is less than f n naught of x. I am just specialized because this is true for all n bigger than n naught. So, let us fix a n naught so that we do not have any. Okay. See, this is what we are saying f n naught x is close to f of x by a distance epsilon. So, I can take the minimum values. right? So, it implies. So, let us look at the minimum value m i. Let me write f n naught. What is this m i of f n naught? That is a minimum value of the function f n naught in the interval x i minus 1. So, so, if let me write it is equal to uh, uh, minimum of f n naught x, x belonging to x i minus 1 and x i. Then, what does the upper one give me? What will this, this equation give me? This is f n naught x, so it will be bigger than the minimum value. right? 
So, m i of f naught minus epsilon will be less than f of x will be less than m i f naught plus epsilon. Is that okay? This equation, this is true for all x. So, let us look at x in the inter sub interval x i minus 1 to x i. So, this will be bigger than the minimum value. It is less than f and not x for every x. So, take the minimum over that. Is that okay? So, this equation gives me this. Now, from the minimum value, how do you go to the lower sums? By multiplying by the length and adding up, right? So, let us do that. So, implies sigma m i of f n naught multiply by the length. So, x i minus x i minus 1 i equal to 1 to n. When I multiply epsilon by those lengths, those length will add up right summation. So, it will be just epsilon times b minus a. Is it okay? This, this part is this is less than f of x multiplied by the length is less than uh, the corresponding thing. So, that is m i f n naught x i minus x i minus 1 plus epsilon times b minus a. Uh, what happened to the sum? Oh, here is the sum. So, i equal to 1 to n. Is that okay? The previous equation I have multiplied throughout by x i into x i minus 1 and summed up. right? So, the first term is m i. So, this first term okay, is is it okay? okay let me uh, just underline it. So, this thing okay, if you multiply by x i minus 1 to x i minus 1 the length of the interval and sum it up. When you multiply by epsilon, that should be giving you epsilon times p minus a. In between, oh, I should put the sum also. Sorry, I forgot to put the sum here. One to n. There is a sum everywhere, right? Yeah. So what does this give me now? Oh, why f of x? No. Yeah, it's okay. Actually, I can put here also the minimum of f of x. So, let me do that. Okay. Okay. Anyway, this uh, I should I should have yeah, I can do that. So, from here when I multiply m i less than I can put here also the minimum of f. Okay. Is it okay? You see from this equation, let me just clarify. This is true for every x. Okay. Now, in the in the first part here, take the minimum over f and naught. Right? This is for every x. So, minimum of the function f and naught in the interval x i minus 1 to x i. So, that will be less than or equal to f of x for every x anyway. Right? And there you can take the minimum of f also. So, you can get here minimum. So, you will get this this part. Take first the minimum over x, you get this quantity. This is less than f of x. Take the minimum of f x over that interval. So, that gives you the minimum function of f i as m i. So, what is that? What is the notation I am writing? We are not writing that. Let me just write what is that quantity. So, that quantity is m i of f. So, I am saying I can just write that is f of x. This quantity is less than f of x. So, it will be less than or equal to minimum also, 
right? And that minimum will also be less than or equal to minimum of that. So I can take minimum everywhere in this inequality. That's what I'm saying. One at a time. But you should do it one at a time to justify that. First, take the minimum over this part, right? This is for every x. So minimum only in the left hand side. So you'll get this quantity, right? Less than or equal to f of x for every x. So take the minimum in that interval. So that is mi. This is less than or equal to f and not of x. So take the minimum over that. So that is mi. Okay. So uh, I should have. So this f of x I can replace it by mi of f. Basically, the idea is f n is close to f. By a margin of epsilon this side or that side, so I can take the minimum over the interval. This is happening for every x, so I can take the minimums. Okay, so that means so the, what is the meaning of this? This means uh, this is the lower sum, so lower sum of small m i, so lower sum of f and not respect to p minus epsilon times b minus a. This first part. Is less than or equal to the lower sum of uh, f with respect to p. F with respect to p, and the last term, this one, is less than or uh, why less than or equal to? It is less than actually. It is strictly less than. It doesn't matter actually. It is less than l f n not the minimum over f n not so. F and not of p plus epsilon times b minus. Basically, what I am saying is that this equation, right? If I take the minimum over all x in the interval x i minus one to x i, so equation holds for minimum also. Multiply by the length of the intervals and add up. That gives you the Lower sums minus epsilon times this, right? So similarly, the upper ones, right? So that means what? The lower sum of f and the lower sum of this is less than. So that means mod of l. Uh, we are writing f n first, f n not p minus the lower sum f p is less than epsilon. In the absolute value, I can write it this way. Is okay. This minus b minus a epsilon times b minus a. I'm writing that inequality back in terms of absolute value, nothing more than that. So similarly, you will have upper sum f and not p minus the lower sum of f p will be less than epsilon times b minus a. Instead of taking minimum, you can take the supremum and the same thing. So hence, upper sum p f minus the lower sum I wanted to estimate this quantity right for f. So that's why so now add and subtract. So uh, less than or equal to absolute value triangle inequality. Upper sum p f, but that is close to. Upper sum of p n uh, p f n not. Uh, I mean, I should interchange because I am writing p first and then f should so be consistent. So that is uh, so we wanted to estimate f. Yeah, second this one. Huh? Yeah, hey, f and not so. Uh, no, oh, that is u. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. That is upper sum. I said similarly, the lower and similarly the upper. Right. We are in that same thing here. Right. Now this quantity is less than or equal to f of x. So maximum of that must be less than or equal to f of x. Less than or equal to maximum of f f x. Right. I'm saying same inequality gives you both. Lower as well as the upper. So now I wanted to estimate this quantity. 
right for so add and subtract so this is less than or equal to upper sum f p is close to upper sum of f and not p plus so i should add upper sum of f and not p minus lower sum of f and not p right plus the last term now left would be lower sum of f and not p minus lower sum of lp add and subtract this technique by now we are very familiar right so less than or equal to upper f and fn so this is this equation now call it 2 call it 3 using 2 and 3 the first one is less than epsilon times ub minus a the last also is less than the same so 2 times this upper minus the lower is less than epsilon right so that we have already seen what where was that upper minus the lower here so we can call that as 1 if you like where fn was fn not was integrable so upper minus lower is small that is what we started right and 2 and 3 are giving corresponding things between fn and f so plus so 1 2 and 3 using 1 2 and 3 i get this is that okay no problem so if you like this is epsilon times 2 of b minus a plus 1 is okay right because epsilon i can always modify go back and change wherever required so implies f belongs to rab so the basic idea is because of uniform convergence fn is close to f for all x that is important thing so you can take the minimum over that sub interval as well take the maximum over sub interval and then multiply by the lengths and add up to get the uh, corresponding Now, fn's are given to be Riemann integrable. Yeah, fn's are given to be Riemann integrable. We prove that f is. Yeah, but why in general, given that fn is bounded, why it should be Riemann integrable? I'm not saying that if it is bounded, then it must be Riemann integrable. I'm saying that. No, what are you saying? So here is the theorem. So what what modification you are suggesting? No, I'm saying that fn can be just a thing only. Right. F are bounded. F are Riemann integrable. Small f's are Riemann integrable. Small f's meaning what? Small fn's or what? Yeah, if the limit is Riemann integrable, why should say all corresponding sequence is Riemann integrable, right? Why should it say that? For example, all f_n's can come to a single term, and all f_n's may not be Riemann integrable, right? But they converge to a constant function. Then the limit is Riemann integrable. Why should the function be Riemann integrable each f_n, right? That is expecting too much. Giving nothing and you are expecting too much. So basic property we are saying is if f_n's are Riemann integrable, right, and f_n's converge to f uniformly, then f also becomes Riemann integrable, and integrals converge. We have not proved integrals converge yet. We have only proved f is Riemann integrable. But proving uh, uh, integrability is uh, okay. So also. Look at integral of f n d mu minus integral of f d mu. We want to show this convergence, so we want to show that this quantity goes to zero, right? We want to show that this quantity goes to zero. But we know something about this is less absolute value of this is less than or equal to integral of f minus f n. Is it okay? Using the property that the absolute value of the integral Riemann integral is less than or equal to integral of the absolute value, right? And which is less than or equal to? Now each function f n x is less than or equal to norm of into the length of the interval b minus a, right? The right hand side. Because the function f minus f n is bounded by the constant, 
norm of f minus f 1. So, I can take it out is less than and this goes to 0 as n goes to infinity right because of uniform convergence norm goes to 0. So, that is not much of a problem once you know that limit is integrable right convergence of integrals is not a big issue right. But the important thing is that you need uniform convergence f n converging uniformly to f to say that you can interchange limit and the integral sign. Okay. Uh, this uh, is the beginning of a uh, I have already mentioned I think that uh, the Riemann integral is not very well behaved with respect to limiting operations namely point wise convergence need not imply integrability right limit of integrals is equal to limit of integrals. So, that started uh, look uh, the research for looking for an integral which has better properties compared to this. So, that is the another point for the beginning of what is called Lebesgue integration okay, where this is much better behaved uniform you do not need uniform convergence you need a slightly milder conditions to be true. Okay. So, this is uh, now the question comes see what we are doing today is very important in mathematics to relate ideas continuity is an idea about uh, how f and x f x converges to something f of x right as x goes to c. And if you take limiting operations we know algebra of limits right if f plus g are continuous then f f and g are continuous then f plus g is continuous product is continuous right. So, here it says if you go on taking uh, uh, limits. So, okay. see uh, this is uh, a very general thing one consider you are looking at the class of functions real valued functions say r to r. Okay. What are the properties that you would like to analyze? You would like to analyze if I add you can add functions. So, you like to know under addition what is preserved I can multiply under multiplication what is preserved I can scalar multiply right given a function f I can multiply by c times f what properties are preserved under that right because on r these are the structures available addition scalar multiplication product right you can take limits under all this what are the properties which are preserved. So, what we have shown is uh, when we did continuity differentiability and so on if f is continuous g is continuous f plus g is continuous uh, differentiability we saw that f plus g is differentiable if f and g are differentiable right product was differentiable right. If f n's are differentiable when can you say the limit is differentiable that we saw is not necessarily true under point wise. So, that is why there is a need to put some stronger conditions which allow us to pass over limit and that operation interchange those two operations right uniform continue, uniform convergence is one. Unfortunately, differentiability does not even is not preserved under uniform convergence one has to put slightly more stronger conditions. So, we will not prove that theorem uh, let me just uh, show you that theorem. So, that uh, you understand. So, this is the integrability f n converges to f uniformly then uh, f is integrable and uh, so here is the it says suppose not only f n is converge uniformly f n dash each function is differentiable and the derivatives also converge uniformly you need something more. Okay. And also suppose that it converges at some point then f n converges uniformly to a differentiable function and derivative. So, it is slightly more convoluted kind of a thing you have to put conditions on the derivative itself to ensure that the limit function is differentiable. Okay. So, we will not go into that um, because it is not a very useful result in many situations it just, just, just simply does not say f n's are differentiable converging uniformly then limit 
is differentiable, right? So, we will not do that. So, let me uh, just uh, summarize what we have done till now. We had looked at sequences of functions, right, and try to analyze what are the limits of under what is the meaning of point wise convergence at every point it converges and we observe that at point wise convergence is not very good behaved, they are not very well behaved, it does not have any one of the properties that we can think of continuity differentiability and so on. So, for that one looks at what is called uniform convergence and it preserves continuity, it preserves integrability, it can preserves boundedness, but in some way uh, it preserves differentiability not exactly straightforward way. Right. So, uh, next time what we want to do is uh, uh, I will stop here today, there is a reason for that, but what, what we want to do is start with uh, sequences and see what is other use of sequences. For example, the algebraic operation of addition of numbers, right? Given two numbers, you can add them a plus b, right? You can three numbers a1, a2, a3, you can add them a1 plus a. Any finite number of real numbers, you can add them because there is operation of addition and inductively given any fi n, you can add them, right? Can you add infinite number of numbers? That is a question. How does one find a way of adding. So, what does it mean? Given a sequence a 1, a 2, a 3 and so on, how do I say something like a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3 plus dot dot dot? It makes sense or not? In what way I can give a sense to that operation? Infinite addition of numbers, right? And that uh, is very natural way of doing that. Uh, uh, that is how do you add a 1 you add a 2. So, a 1 plus a 2 you have got another one add a 3. So, up to a n right. So, you can go on doing it, but what eventually you want is when you go on adding a 1 plus a n whether they become stabilized somewhere right. So, that is limit of a 1 plus a 2 plus a n you will like to consider. So, that gives you a notion of what is called series of numbers, right. So, we will do it next time. So, we will stop here today.